All right, I've got something extra, extra, extra special today. This is the IC Dock. This is the, the, the IC Dock. This is a 24, two and a half inch bay that's only gonna take up three five and a quarter inch bays. This is a cage for running a lot of two and a half inch drives. I requested it, IC Dock sent it. Actually, IC Dock sent it a while ago. I had to order some special cables that were gonna come from China. They were delayed. Let's take a look at what's in the bag. What's in the bag? What's in the box? What's in the bag? All right, so full disclosure, I've already sort of unpacked this and I didn't want to struggle with the packing material and all the other stuff. But in the box, what you get is this, which is lovely, but also look at all the drive labels and screws. This is glorious. There's 24 two and a half inch drives. Nobody's motherboard, almost nobody's motherboard, except for maybe some of those Chia mining motherboards from China will have 24 SATA ports. That's insane. But also, this doesn't make sense from a data density standpoint. Like, you know, if you were doing something like mining Chia, two and a half inch drives really is not a good choice because they're not great for data density because you can get a mechanical hard drive that's like 18 terabytes. These are seven millimeter height insert trays. So these will hold two terabyte mechanical hard drives at best. But still, packing in 48 terabytes in this thing. Now let's get on a little secret. If you do go SSD, you can get up to four terabyte, two and a half inch, seven millimeter SSDs right now. You can kind of get eight terabyte, two and a half inch SSDs, but not really. And she has made that actually a little bit more difficult. So what does happen if you have a crap load of SSDs that you're going to, you know, build something out of and just do a lot of absolute ridiculousness just to see, you know, what sort of insanity that you might have going on with respect to, you know, I don't know, doing some stuff for building stuff out of SSDs. I mean, what kind of crazy person is gonna have just a giant pile of SSDs. For doing stuff, I mean, why would you even, does this even make any sense? All right, so full disclosure, 24 drives makes a heck of a lot of sense with AMD Epic. And you might remember the Tyan S8030 motherboard. It's got a ton of connections and it'll easily support 24 two and a half inch drives. It's no coincidence because 24 two and a half inch drives is what you normally see in a rack server configuration. Some, like some of the gigabyte, you know, server rack chassis that we reviewed previously, two and a half inch drive base, 24 across the front, running a lot of SATA drives. The lanes are there, the connectivity is there. It makes a lot of sense. In the past, you know, servers were built out of SAS drives, serial attached SCSI. And it was because these had redundant connections to the controller. And this is because you wanted to use a controller that uh, would take some of the load off of the CPU and would present all of your, you know, block storage devices basically as one unified volume. So the CPU didn't really have to do any work. In this day and age of multi-core monster machines, uh, it's sort of, not that way anymore. You wanna just sort of handle it in software. You also don't have to define how you wanna store stuff uh, in a whole array kind of a way. So, you know, in the past, you would take, you know, a big old stack of SSDs and say, this is gonna be RAID 6. And I'm gonna have two of these that, well, I'm gonna have the two drives capacity worth for redundancy information. The redundancy is actually spread across all of the drives so that any one drive can fail and I can still compute, you know, the check summing and stuff like that to ensure that the information is correct with one drive missing. And I could actually lose up to two drives. I'm not really sure if the information on the other drives is actually accurate. I have to trust that the rest of the hardware is not failing in some obscure way in a, in a case of a two drive failure. You can also do, you know, a striped mirror, you know, basically a, a RAID 10 of sorts uh, or groups of mirrors or anything like that if you're out after the most raw performance. But you do all of that sort of on a device level with a pool of devices. 
but when you're managing all of that stuff off of the RAID controller in the computer, the RAID controller doesn't really have any insight into the file system and the information that you're storing. Whereas if you run the storage policy on the server, then it can know and it says, okay, I've got 24 drives connected. This is a critically important, I need to store this critical piece of information on half of the disks here. And so you end up with, you know, in many copies, or you could say, I want it to have the performance characteristics of RAID 10, and the software will figure it out and figure out the equivalent redundancy. And it's doing that on an object by object basis instead of a whole file system. Yeah, it might reserve some space or move things around or, or do some other wizardry, some other magic, but this is, this is what we call, you know, software defined storage. Uh, VMware has their own thing, vSAN, and there's special rules around running that with vSAN. Ceph in the open source world maybe has a little bit more flexibility uh, and a little bit more, <laughs> you know, maybe a little bit more resiliency, but uh, you know, the VMware support, commercial support's really nice. So I had planned to run this on Epic with the Tyan uh, S8030 motherboard. And uh, that's a particularly well-suited motherboard for this, especially if you're DIYing it. And it's really not super expensive. Uh, and it will just, you know, slot right in with this cage and be great. The problem was, was the cabling's not quite here yet. We're using sort of bleeding edge hardware. And I figured for the home labbers, you might be interested in a, in a less expensive solution. So if you are gonna use this on a home lab, what do you need to know? Well, first of all is the connector type. You've got six connections here for SATA. There's switches here that are gonna control how bright you want the LEDs to be and how much you want to run the fans. Then we have six connections. This little tiny SFF connector. It's sort of a dual pin connection kind of thing, <laughs> or a dual. This is a pretty standard serial attached SCSI connector, but it also shows up on motherboards. This cable is the SATA connection to an SFF connection. The specific SFF connector is here on the screen. Uh, there's a link to these cables below. And for our particular setup that we're gonna look at, we actually need two different kinds of cables because like I said, no commodity home lab or desktop motherboard is gonna have those connections. So it's SATA on one side and this little square connector on the other. Now normally this square connector is something that you would see on a server or an HBA or a RAID controller. And then this would go out to your drives and connect that way. But in this case, we're gonna go the other way. We're gonna connect that to our enclosure and we gotta connect five more of these because 24 drives, four drives per, per connector. And then these will plug into our motherboard. Now for our motherboard, we're using the ASRock Tai Chi B550 because it has eight onboard SATA connections. It actually has two onboard SATA controllers, two onboard two port SATA controllers, and then the onboard four port provided by, you know, the AMD interface. For the CPU, we're gonna run with the AMD 4750G and we'll have two of these cables taking up literally every single onboard SATA port. Well, that's not enough, what do we do? Well, you need something called an HBA. This particular one was $5 on eBay. This is, I think, uh, taken out of a Dell, and this is just like a Broadcom Ra Dell RAID controller, but it's not really a RAID controller, it's, it's soft RAID. We've got A and B, and notice it's the same kind of square connector. Well, I also happened to find on eBay really cheap the Supermicro SAST-0658. This is actually the same SAS cable, so if you search for that SAS model number for this you know, square to two PCB connector, you'll find those cables. But sometimes on eBay, they don't list them right with the SFF number. You can actually look it up by the super micro part number and that's all they have. And you can get these cheaper because they're not categorized correctly. So pro tip. Another pro tip for you, if you're not gonna run all 24 drives, don't take out this little piece of plastic because these connectors are so small and so precision that if you get a little bit of dust in the connector, it will cause it to not work correctly when you do eventually plug it in. You know how things get like dust bunnies in them and things like that? Uh, it can be a problem. So you wanna leave these little protectors in until they're, in, you know, until you're cabling basically. So there's our other option. That's square to square basically. But then this will connect to this controller. And so that is gonna give us 16 of our 24. We've got another eight. So I've gotta have two of these cards. So this is uh, gonna be a home media server. That's gonna be in another another video, and like I said, home lab. Think about it like this <laughs> from an epic standpoint. But if you're not gonna do it from an epic standpoint, this is also an option. One thing that I really like about this is that this old Antec 900 case, which is a classic, has folded metal. So it's sometimes problematic with things that are more than one five and a quarter inch drive bay tall. But this has grooves for those. They planned for that in the engineering. Good job, Icy Doc. So for the media ingest server, Using Ubuntu 20.10 because 
laziness mainly. There's a lot of really cool utilities on Linux for both the DVD side of things, which we're gonna take a look at in another video, and also SATA drive analysis. Now, I'm actually just gonna be using this for testing and some configuration stuff, so I'm just popping the drives in and out really, really quickly. I mean, obviously, I've got way more than 24 drives. It's definitely not up to Chia mining, if that's what you think. Although, if you were into that, it could work, except for the whole data density thing. The throughput's really gonna help you. Now, one interesting thing I ran into, my cheap AliExpress cables didn't work. The ones from SATA to the uh, SFF square connector. Plugging the SATA side into the motherboard and the square connector into the enclosure, the drives weren't detected. Even though I'd enabled SATA hot plug in the BIOS, it didn't work. I'm not really sure why, because if I used the same cables off of the RAID controller, those worked fine. In terms of the IC Dock Tough Armor 24 bay, well, they've also got an 8 and a 16 bay, if that's a little bit more modest, a little bit more your needs. This is pretty great for building your own, you know, sort of high density enclosure. I mean, it would be a lot of fun to uh, take a Mac Mini and retrofit one of these into a Mac Mini and turn it into a, a home server. A Mac Mini home server with 24 hot swap bays where the CRT screen used to be, and a little tiny LCD screen readout, and then you know, maybe some USB ports for external media, and it'd be a lot of fun. Just hollow that out and do something interesting. I don't know, maybe. This isn't the first time we've reviewed stuff from IC Doc. The very first thing that, you know, sort of acquainted me with IC Doc with the purchase that I made for, it was four two and a half inch U.2 connections for PCI Express 3. And I'm really excited about, and there's a PCI Express 4 version of that coming, and it can't get here soon enough because, well, I gotta do PCI Express 4 U.2 testing. So if you need oddball stuff, you know, NVMe to USB adapters, U.2 NVMe to USB adapters, or M.2 to NVMe adapters, or other stuff that we've covered in the past from IC Doc, be sure to check out all that. You'd be surprised what you can connect from A to B. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out. You can find me at the Level 1 forums. Can't wait for Media Server Part 2, so, you know, like, favorite, subscribe, comment, get subscribed so you can see that later. Something. I'm going now.